The Honourable Member Russell Norman. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, we're having this debate today because John Banks has effectively been found to be lying about a donation to a political party, or uh, rather to himself as part of a local body election. Now, he, he hid the source of the donation. Now, the reason why that's important is that if our democracy is to be protected, it's important that there is transparency about the money that goes to politicians and political parties. That is one of the founding principles of electoral finance rules and all the rules we have around our democracy to try to protect it from the influence of money. And what John Banks did is he took donations, large donations, and he lied about them in his, his donations return in order to try to, uh, to cover up the source of the donations. Now, Jerry Brownlee has got up in this House and said he thinks John Banks is an honourable man in spite of this. I, I think it is extraordinary that the government, the National Party, and I, and I assume Jerry Brownlee represents the National Party, the National Party thinks that it is an honourable thing to do to break the electoral finance laws, because that is what John Banks did. He broke one of the founding laws that protects our democracy from the influence of money, because it requires political parties and politicians to tell the public within certain rules who gave them the money. Now, that's important. If you, if you think about what government does, what does it do day in, day out? It spends $60, $70 billion of public money. It makes a whole bunch of rules that have a huge influence on what happens in our society and who can make money and who can't and, and, and how they do it. So we want to know who's giving money to political parties so that we can see whether those political parties are influenced by those donations. And what John Banks did is he circumvented those founding laws, the, the electoral finance laws, in order to hide the source of the donations. And that's why he's had to leave Parliament after it's gone to court. Uh, to, Mr Speaker, you've pointed out he hasn't registered a conviction against him yet, uh, but he's lost the case and the judge will make his decision shortly. Um, but that is why Mr Banks had to leave Parliament, was because he broke those laws. And the National Party have come out in this debate and said, Mr Banks is an honourable man. I think it tells you a lot about the values of the National Party that they seem to think that it is OK to break electoral finance law, that you're still an honourable person, even though you get forced out of the House, when you break electoral finance law. <clears throat> and Chris Finlayson is speaking out about it, but Jerry Brownlee just stood up in this House and said, Mr Banks is an honourable man, even though Mr Banks has just been proven to have lied in his donations return and hid the source of the money that was funding his campaign. And that's pretty shocking from this government. And I think tells a lot about the values of this government. And John Key, of course, is implicated in this up to his eyeballs because, of course, it was John Key that gifted the seat of Epson to John Banks in the first place. And John Key failed in his duty as Prime Minister when he failed to look at the evidence that was mounting around John Banks. The evidence that John Banks had broken the law, electoral finance law, the evidence that John Banks had been lying. Now, Mr, Mr. Key, of course, is on the record um, in relation to a, and a whole different issue during the Privileges Committee in 2008, which was a very high profile issue involving Mr. Peters and many, many others. And Mr. Key said, <clears throat> he, Mr. Key called on Prime Minister Helen Clark to stand Mr. Peters down, saying, that's what I would do if I were Prime Minister. Well, where are the standards? Now, that's what Mr. Key said back in 2008. And then when Mr. Banks was found very clearly to have broken the law, Mr. Key didn't even want to look at the, didn't even want to look at the police report. He was faced with a very similar situation, and he wouldn't act, and he wouldn't enforce those standards. What I want to draw attention to today are all the bills that have been passed in this House because of the vote of the disgraced John Banks. Because there's now a series of, of laws in New Zealand that are only on the statute books because of the disgraced vote of a disgraced MP who broke the campaign finance laws before he came to this place. Right? Before he even got here, he had broken the campaign finance laws and should never have been in Parliament. But because of that one vote, the dodgy vote that John Key organised with the dodgy deal in Epsom, a series of laws were passed. An amendment to the Crown Minerals Act that made it easier to mine our conservation land. 
Thank you, John Banks and the National Party. It undermines the ability of the Minister of Conservation to carry out the protection and preservation of our conservation estate, and it gave the Minister of Energy decisions into, into, uh, input into the decisions on mining on conservation land. It also undermined New Zealanders' right to protest. That was the Anadarko Amendment, which restricts people's protest at sea and criminalises protest at sea. That law only exists on the statute books because of the vote of John Banks, the man who should never have been in this parliament, the man who broke campaign finance rules before he ever stepped back in here again. It was his vote that delivered that law. Then we have the minimum wage starting the minimum wage starting out wage amendment law, which not only brought back youth rates but extended them to 18 and 19 year olds. It overturned all the hard work done by the Greens and unions and others working with Labor when they're in government in getting rid of youth rates in 2008. This law is a clear discrimination on the basis of age. That law only only got through on the single vote of the disgraced MP John Banks. It would never have happened if John Banks hadn't been here. The Employment Relations Secret Ballot for Strikes Amendment Bill, To Hanare's Bill, a solution looking for a problem. <clears throat> the Mixed Ownership Model Bill. Now, this is the, the privatisation of the electricity companies, the partial privatisation of the electricity companies. This is perhaps the most destructive legacy of this government. That bill only got through by a single vote, and that was the vote of the disgraced MP John Banks, a man who should never have been in this parliament. The government even used John Banks' vote to help pass the Sky City legislation, despite the fact that Sky City was involved in Mr Banks' court case. The fact that Parliament ended up passing these controversial bills that the Order. National Party that the National Party was happy to rely on the vote of John Banks to pass all of these controversial bills tells you everything about the values of the National Party. The Prime Minister had a police report sitting on his desk that told the truth about John Banks and the Prime Minister refused to open and read that police report because he knew that if the truth came out, Mr Banks would be kicked out of Parliament and Mr Key would not be able to pass all of these pieces of legislation through our House because he wouldn't be able to rely on the disgraced vote of the disgraced MP John Banks. That is the reality of what has happened in this Parliament. Now, it's time to clean up the donations uh, regime and the campaign finance rules. I mean, it was important that John Banks got caught and it was important that he got prosecuted. And good on Mr McCready, it wouldn't have happened had he not done it, um, because, of course, the police didn't, didn't pursue the case. But <clears throat> it was a pretty cut-and-dried case, as it turned out. Um, but we do need to clean up the rules. We need to clean up campaign finance rules around donations and spending caps, non-party party election activities and the partial public funding of political parties. We also need to look at whether the, the current setup, the electoral agency, should be able to enforce campaign finance rules, because one of the things we discovered was, of course, that the police, um, the police don't seem to want to uh, prosecute these cases, which in this case was a pretty straightforward case. Now, of course, this also goes back to changing the, to, to amending MMP. We just had a referendum on MMP, and the people of New Zealand wanted to keep it by majority, but they also wanted to reform it. And the independent umpire went away and made a series of recommendations <laughs> about how we could fix the, uh, the anomalies around MMP, which is the coattailing rule in exchange for lowering the threshold to 4 per cent. That was the essential. There was a number of other amendments proposed by the Electoral Commission. The, the party that blocked progress on reforming MMP was the National Party. The other parties in this House would have been able to deliver a majority, a 75 per cent majority, in order to fix the one thing that everyone was concerned about MMP, which is the coattailing rule. The independent umpire recommended that we change the coattailing rule and lower the threshold to 4 per cent, and the National Party blocked progress on it. That is just the facts. Because the National Party wants to abuse that rule in Epson with ACT and John Banks, as, we saw, as we've seen, and with others. MMP is a great system, but like all good systems, it needs to be improved. The independent umpire gave Parliament a series of improvements we could make, and the National Party blocked making progress on those improvements, which actually would have led to a better electoral system and a fairer electoral system. 
As Andrew Geddes said, the Nats are acting in manifest bad faith regarding electoral reform. And that's because they're acting in their own petty political vested interests rather than acting for the country as a whole in order to improve our electoral system. As the independent umpire, the Electoral Commission recommended to this parliament and the other parties around here except the National Party who blocked progress on implementing the recommendations of the independent uh, the independent umpire on this, the Electoral Commission, and that's why if we need to actually implement those, those recommendations, when there's a change of government on, in September this year, we will implement the recommendations of the Electoral Commission. I call the Right Honourable Winston.